No, this is bad because your name is not there. <laughs> you look so that's smart. It. No, that's better. That's better. Okay, <laughs> this will be fun. Dave McQueen, my lovely dear friend for how many years oh now? Oh my god. Years. Well, it's about 13. 13 years about of friendship. 13 years, yeah. This wonderful human, I'm sure he'll oh be like, goodness. don't say too much, but he's an amazing business coach, mentor, extraordinaire, helps people across the globe mm -hmm. to shine. To shine. And that's what we're going to go with. <laughs> this is going to be his trap line this, from now on. I help you to shine. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> No, but in all honesty, Dave, I'm so grateful you came down to pleasure. East London yes. um, to have a chat. Yes, pleasure. Because I feel like whenever I speak to you, you're one of those humans that I'm like, you're, he's like a Gandalf and he just knows stuff about that. life and Gandalf. everything. Gandalf the Grey. Gandalf the Grey. So whenever I speak to Dave, I'm like, I feel better. I feel more motivated. I feel like my life is in one piece and everything's going to be fine. So this is what you're going to provide for no. us, no? So absolutely. No pressure. No pressure. Um, but yeah, I don't have an agenda, but I was just thinking, because you live and breathe that space, mm -hmm. what would you say to anyone who would like to pursue their dream, mm -hmm. any dream we're talking, yes. I'm not just saying your business or whatever, they want to pursue a dream. Yeah. What do you say to them? No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> So I, I think it's important to um, to get a real sense as to why that dream is important. Mm -hmm. The why is important for me. Um, and sometimes people like it because they want to be famous. Sometimes people will like it because they, uh, they've they seen somebody or seen something and they're like, oh my God, I want to do that. So I like to really interrogate it because I don't like killing people's dreams. I won't do that. But I love to ask loads of questions. Why is this important to you? What does it look like? Give me the touch, the taste, the feel. And what does it look like when you've actually achieved that dream? Because lots of people have dreams and then once they've got to that space and then it's stopped, there's nothing else. So I like to see it in the bigger picture. I have to test it. You know, what are the things legally that you'll go in order to be able to make that dream come true? Actually, you can tell me the illegal ones as well, just, just be honest. But just being able to find out why is it so important to you? And what does the look, taste, touch and feel look like when you've got there? And is this dream your only dream or are there other dreams around it as well? So is it a bit like there's so much conversation these days about manifesting? Like, yes. what do you think about manifesting? Is that a thing? Is that just like a trend? Has that always been around? Just no one named it yet. What is is that connected or is that kind of like? Meh? So I think it, I think it, it depends on the person and how you see it. So sometimes somebody may manifest or may assume that something may happen, but sometimes it might not be for us. Sometimes we may wish for things, and when we get into that space, we realize, oh my god, this is not necessarily what I want to do. So I believe there's something in writing it down. I think if you're a spiritual person and you believe in a higher power being able to influence them, then, then by all means knock yourself out. But I think more than trying to manifest it, it's recognizing it. When it does come, am I ready for it? Mm. How do you know when you're ready for it? Again, it depends on who you are. But there is, I believe that we have three brains, okay? Okay, go we've for got, it, Dave. We've got the logic brain here. We've got the brain in our heart. And we've got the brain in our stomach. Okay, like you know, sometimes when you say, you know, you've I've got a gut feeling or there's something in my stomach because yeah. we have as much nerve endings in our gut as we do in our brain. That's why they call it the second brain and then your heart. And so the logic, the emotion, and the rational—I can't remember which way around it is—but with our three brains, I think our bodies are attuned to frequencies, and we're attuned to when we know when something's right or when something's wrong. You know, have you ever been in a situation where? I know you have because we've had this conversation where you've met or you've spoken to somebody and you're like, okay, this is really cool, but something's not quite right here. Oh, yeah. Something's a bit off. Yeah. Okay. Like in a business context or any? Any, any. business or personal. Yeah. And something's not quite aligned. For me, that's a, that's our, one of our three brains or maybe all three of them mm. being aligned with that. And again, with the dream, sometimes you may say, oh, you know, I want to be a famous artist or what have you, um, or just a brilliant artist, all right? I want to be a famous artist. And you get into that space and realize, hold on a minute, maybe I don't want to be famous. I just want to be an artist and that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be more Banksy where no one knows what it is and they get my stuff goes out there and it inspires the world with intrigue rather than no people knowing exactly who I am. Yeah. And a lot of it is our body picks up on that. I really believe that, that we, we know when something's not quite right. And, you know, 
the second bit for me is around having people around you who will keep you accountable. Mm. So having really good friends, mentors, coaches, what I call the personal advisory board. The personal advisory board is those individuals you choose to be around you. It could be family, it could be friends, it could be a coach, it could be a mentor, whatever. But individuals who you know at any given point in time, when you're processing stuff around dreams, around ambitions, around what you want to do, you can pick up the phone, send them a text, send them a message, and they can honestly come back to you around why they agree with you, what some of their reservations may be like, and, and basically some kind of guidance that they may give you as well. Because sometimes we need to get out of our heads mm. and see what it looks like from somebody else looking on the outside in. But again, those people in your trusted advisory board should be people who you trust their point of view as well. Don't just go and pick somebody because they, you've known them for 17 years. But you've known them for 17 years and you trust their opinion. That's very different. What so if two. the opinions are all different and then you end up super confused still what to do? And again, you, oh, if, if part of what I do with my personal advisory board sometimes is where possible, I jump on Zoom or I'll have a dinner. You know me and dinners, right? I'll have a dinner where I'll get a group of people around and I'll go, look, this is what I'm really running through. I want you to give me all the questions that I should really go and consider. And, and, and I want to get a kind of consensus as to what are the top two or three things that I should focus on. And usually when I get that, you, it's not as disparate. It's usually quite uniform or unified in terms of the feedback that I get. I can walk away from any one of those meetings with two things that I know are going to be my priorities. Mm, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. So like much more like tangible yeah, stuff. Yeah, you just concentrate. Yeah. yeah. How would you, how can you make it more tangible? Like these are my few tips So no matter what you want to do as next thing, mm -hmm. whatever is that dream, big, small, doesn't matter. What are the tangible things that person can sit down today and be like, try to do this, try to do this, try to do that. And not mm -hmm. to overwhelm them, but like so many people are like, I don't even know where to start. Therefore I'm frozen. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I love doing when coaching people around dreams is, again, as I said to you before, I want to know what does it look like, taste, feel like when you're in that space. And then I go, okay, so you've done that and that's a year or two down the line. Beautiful. Now your dream is you're this uh, amazing ballet dancer in a, I don't know, at the Royal Albert Hall, etc. So we've got that picture painted. I go, all right, let's, so what has to happen before that? before you get to the Royal Albert Hall. Okay, and what has happened before that, before we get to that space? And then we, we start with that bit and then we work our way back all the way to where we are right now. But we start to unpick all the things that need to be in place for that to be able to happen. Mm -hmm. And very often the overwhelm comes, as you said, at this point here, because we go, oh my God, what do I need to do? Well, I go, okay, show me show me where you, your, your destination you want. It's like, okay, you say to me, Dave, I, I want to go to New York. And I go, right, that's brilliant. I always want to go to New York. Okay, Thank brilliant. You. All right. <laughs> that's my manifestation. You're right, you do it, put it out there and you do it, all right? <laughs> Within a year, we're going to get you in New York. Okay, Ooh. I'm putting that out there now, okay? Yeah. You say, I want to get to New York. And I go, okay, so how are you going to get there? And, and where are you going to stay? So you'll say to me, I'm going to fly Virgin and, and I'm going to stay on Broadway. I'm like, okay, I'm happy for you. All right, so we, <laughs> this, is, this is what you do. And I go, okay. And how much money is it going to cost to be able to do that? And you go, okay, Dave, for me to go to New York, it's going to cost me two and a half grand all in to get all this stuff done. Like, okay. And are you going to have, do you have that two and a half grand in savings or do you have two and a half grand in earnings or a client that you're going to charge two and a half grand that's going to allow you to do that? Then we go there. Okay. What do we need to do to be able to get that piece of work? Okay. Are you okay being able to make sure that that's going to be done within the next three, six, nine months? And what we've done is we've taken your ultimate destination. We know how you're going to get them, what you're going to do. And then we started to chunk it down into smaller pieces. And so by the time we get here, we go, right. So I've said to you in a year, you're going to be there. These are the things that I need to do to get it in place, like water. All right. We're going to make sure that we move, but we're still going to obviously be controlled by the banks of the river. As Our favorite quote from Bruce Lee. That's right. Which is, be like water, be like water. shifting, like change. Shifting and changing. Depending yes. on the conversation. Love it. But um, because we've started with that end in mind and then we work our way back, you're not so much overwhelmed with what you need to do now because it's, it's gradual. It's you a game, my friend. Down. Yeah, it's a game of inches, as my friend says. You know, what you do in order to build muscle or in order to build a habit or what have you, you've got to be doing it repetitively, bit by bit by bit, instead of trying to jump in as one. So start with the big one and then work your way back. Mm, and you don't have to do that. it on your own as well. You've got people around you. And yeah. what can they do on their own? Is it a put a blank paper in front of yourself, start writing, start doodling, mm -hmm. record something, think about it? What, what, what can they do on their own if, let's say, that person is not available right now mm. or they're a bit shy to share it yet? Just draw it, record it, put it on video, put it on audio, 
create a little folder on your phone. Most people have a phone now, which is a smartphone, or put it on your laptop. Find a place where you can actually either physically or digitally record all that stuff. And then I think the thing is, is just being able to then reach out to individuals who you know and just being able to share that dream. Mm. And for me, a dream that is shared gives you accountability. That is powerful. Yeah, a lot of people go on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but lots of people have this stuff, and it's in their mind. And I'm like, okay, I really dream this thing, and I just and people are like, oh my god, this day, this. Like I was saying to you before, you know, I've I've always loved um, the variations of art from paintings and fine sculptures and what have you. And and I always thought that investing in art was something that was totally out of my reach because it's like you know paintings for 21 million. Or, yeah. How am I ever going to get that? But then I've seen these artists who are like, they've got these brilliant pieces of art and they want to sell them for a hundred pounds. I'm mm. like, I'll buy that. I'm like, I'll buy it for 200 pounds. And, and what it allowed me to do was start to have conversations with curators and artists and individuals longer down their journey. Obviously it's more expensive the older you are and the younger you are, unless you've got some real big promotional team, it's not as expensive. But what I love about art, for example, is that Art appreciates more than most asset classes, like property, like the stock market. Well, it appreciates over time. It's a longer thing, but it appreciates over time. So I started to read, started to learn. And then I was like, okay, if I want to get to this space of art, how am I going to do it? I can go and meet people. I can host supper clubs of my own. And I can go and sponsor people to have exhibitions. And I'm in a position to be able to do that. And so I start to do that. And bit by bit, I start to pull all those pieces together. So not only am I going to be able to invest in brilliant art, but I'll meet amazing people. I'll have friends like you who will come down and be part of that experience as well. And it's the dream I had is something that I shared with other people. Hmm. And they were like, Dave, you, it's not, you're not going to do that. You, sorry, there's going to be no problem you doing that. You've got a rich network. You've got people around you. Just do it. But because I was able to put it out there and tell them it keeps me accountable because they all say to me, okay, what's happening with that? Dream? Yeah. It's not just what's happening. Yeah. yeah, what is happening about? So start first, as you said, mm. by drawing and putting those things down, recording whatever media you have. But then once you've done that, start speaking to people. And don't just keep it in your head. If you're going to keep it in your head, don't do it. I mean, I'm going to be harsh. I'll be really harsh yeah. about that. But if you're going to just keep it in your head and not share it with somebody who's close to you, just don't do it. Exactly. I mean, I'm the best example. I'm not going to dive deep now into it. There's other videos that can show you my story. But if I didn't share what I do, I wouldn't at all be sitting right now where 100%. I am. 100%. So it's nice, it's a hobby, you could completely stay that way and if that's what you want, that's great. But if I didn't say, hi guys, I really love drawing, I don't know what to do with it, I wouldn't be sitting here with 100%. you and doing what I love to do. 100%. 100%. It's crazy. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. It's all good, it's all good. Yeah, this is good. This is our good. first YouTube video as well. <laughs> okay, I'm not we going to We have over. recorded before. Yeah. This is going to oh, be off. Yes. This is off. Oh, I'm going to link the old yes, things that we we've have. done together. We have. Thank you so much for coming. No, it's all right. It's all I right. will definitely pick your brain more in the future. That's fine, right. 100%. <laughs> Yay. This, is, this will be the first of many. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. See ya.